So I want to show you how to make about the simplest shoe you can. And it's about as simple as the tea tunic is. It's only a few cuts and it's only a few seams. Ideally, these would be used for costume slip-on covers for other shoes. For instance, if you're going to a reenactment event or something like that. Now you may have noticed I'm wearing one sock, one shoe, and baggy pants. I have this clothing on to illustrate a few things. Firstly, if you are going to be wearing just a sock underneath it, use the sock that you will be wearing. Don't use a thinner sock and then later wear a thicker sock with it. Use the sock that you will be wearing when you draw your lines, make your cuts. And the same goes for if you're wearing a shoe. Use the shoe that you will be wearing. Look at the difference side by side. The length difference and the bulk difference is pretty big. So when you go to make this, if you're going to be barefoot, which I don't recommend, or if you're going to be socked or shoed, that is what you base the lines you're going to draw and the cuts you're going to make around. Now the other thing is if your pant leg is going to get in the way, you could tuck it into your sock, but that can be pretty uncomfortable and it can pull out sometimes. So another quick way is you take either the outside or the inside seam. I like to take the outside and you pull it to one side and you put your finger against your leg like that. You fold this over like this and then you roll up the edge. That will hold a lot better and a lot more comfortably. It also helps in the instance that your costume has baggy pants. And when standing, this can drape down over what you did to secure it. And you can even use a safety pin if you have any concern about it staying put. But if you do it snugly, it's not going anywhere the whole day. Maybe one minor correction to it on a bathroom break. So I'm going to be using my socked foot to show you what's needed here. Firstly, you do need a way to sew. You can hand stitch these. That's going to take longer, of course. Preferably, you have a sewing machine. You're going to need something to mark. You're going to need something to cut. Now let's talk about the fabric. You're going to want some kind of padding. Even if this is just a slip cover, you don't want the sole of the shoe to tear up the work. And so you need some sort of buffer. Ideally, you want a thick, soft piece of fabric, like this wool here. A velvet might work. And you want it to be twice the length of your foot, about and about twice your foot's width per foot. Because what you'll be doing is you'll be folding it over once one way, folding it over again the other way. And this is what you'll be tracing on for your pad. You want to get the outside of your foot right up against the outer fold. and you just trace around it with your marker. Then you cut that out. Now, you can use some stitching on this to hold it together better. It doesn't need very much, though. Your heel is partially joined together, and one edge of it is already joined together. Take a look at how thick that is, by the way. Should you feel the need to stitch it a little bit, you won't need that much. Maybe about two feet of thread. And here's your tip. 
for threading the eye of a needle. Wet the eye of the needle. Get a little bit of a water bubble on there and then push it through just like that. Very simple. If you wet the tip of the thread, you might run into all sorts of problems. By wetting the eye of the needle, you encourage the thread, which is dry, to soak up some of that fluid and in doing so, pass itself through the eye more easily. And you pick a spot, let's say somewhere at the toe. Pass the needle through, pull it, almost to the end. Leave a little bit of a tail sticking out here. Pass it back through. Pull it up. Go back through the way you came. Pull it through. And that's secure. That shouldn't let your thread come out. Then you can continue stitch. Now I'm going to pass this needle underneath my first run of thread and bring it like this. I'm going to go an even distance to what I already made over, bring it through, turn it over this way, put it through the last hole I had made, pass it under there, and repeat. Once I've gotten a few stitches in, the way I finish with this is I go through like that, I go over the top, I go through again, and I just slip it under there, pull it through, and I cinch it down that way, and snip it. We don't need very much here. We don't need to do all this. We don't need to do all the way around the edge. We just need it to hold together. And just that little amount of stitching, since it's four runs of thread on either side per stitch, should be enough to hold it in place. Now your other piece of fabric is going to be a square that is twice the length of your foot both directions. Now, this is if you're making two shoes, which I assume you are. I'm making one for demonstration purposes. This right here with the big toe flexed up is about the distance you want off of the tip of where you're going to place your foot. Your alignment is going to be about between your middle toe and your third toe down from your big toe. While an aid helps with this, it's not entirely necessary. You can make a roughly straight line that comes just behind your heel and goes out to the edge. Once you got your line, go ahead and cut it out. You can set this piece of fabric aside for the other shoe. So it's time for this to go to the machine. 